Hey everyone, this is Mandy. And this is Dana. We're doing a little podcast about the 9-11 faker, Tanya Head. Tanya Head. Strange name, right? Yeah. Yeah, strange name indeed. So, this is Tanya Head. She, I think, grew up in Spain, I'm assuming. Yeah. Yeah. No, for sure. She, yeah. She grew up in Spain. She was a privileged person, a yeah. little bit overweight for her whole life. Yeah, so a silver spoon Spaniard. <laughs> yeah, and um, <clears throat> this is a story about what she did that was so shameful, right? Uh, in my opinion, heinous. Heinous, yes. Very bad. She wanted to be a part of the entire 9-11 tragedy, but she was not a part of it. In, in That's the, a spoiler alert. Spoil, yeah, spoiler alert. Uh, in the aftermath of 9-11, we both know there were a lot of heroic stories and a lot of uh, uh, rousing tales, people saving people, people helping people. And Tanya Head wanted to be a part of that buzz. She wanted to be a part of that heroic tale yeah. whirlpool that was going on. Yeah. She, wanted, she, she uh, grew up always making stories up. Okay. According to the documentary that was made about her, Mm -hmm. she made up stories about having boyfriends that she didn't have and, like, just different silly things that someone would lie about to get attention for or just to make people see her differently, right? Yeah, no, that's really, really well said. So... So she had a lot of... This is probably the wrong way to say it, but she had a lot of practice. Yes, she, she was well... Versed in the the art, the art of the art of the white lie. Yes, white lie. No, this was not a white lie yeah, this, for her. No, this this became. I'm sure there were other ones, but this was not a white lie. She was um, a woman, pretty portly. I don't. I I feel bad. I we keep be making careful. fun of her weight. We gotta be careful. But she. We're not fat shaming in any way, shape, or form. We're just describing her body as portly. Yes. She, after 9-11, I guess moved to New York from Spain and joined the 9-11 survivors group. The survivor group, yeah. She ended up becoming, like, the leader for it. A lot of people uh, at first really loved her, right? They they said she, she, she was very... They thought she was so strong. She, and held like held herself well with all the like the grief. Yeah, so she was a positive source. Uh, she was extremely outspoken, mm-hmm. and she had a tale that was almost unbelievable. It was, if you listen to nine eleven survivors, it was kind of a tale she wove together as everything that happened to those people, but all together. Like, different things. Like, I lost... She said, my husband worked in this tower, and then it was her fiancé. So, that's actually kind of what got her a little tripped up, because people were like, what are you... What? Was he your husband or your fiancé? Yeah, she told the husband story first to several people, and then it changed to my fiancé was in the tower. She grabbed a name from... Someone who had passed away. From the roster of the people that, mm-hmm. that perished. And said, yes, we were dating and we were both in the towers, but we were in different towers. And then it turns into, well, I was in the Sky Lobby. If anyone is familiar with 9-11 and the events that happened and people who survived, the Sky Lobby was the 78th floor and it was obliterated when... The crash occurred. When the, Obliterated. Yeah, when the like, plane hit, yeah. Wiped it out. Mm-hmm. So then her story just continues. It's kind of like, uh, you know, people who tell tall tales, right? I do. She'd be telling tall tales. She'd be telling some tall tales. So then it changed from, oh, well, I survived to, oh, also, I was on fire and my arm was almost ripped off. Then it turned to, one of the main heroes of 9-11, Wells, Wells Crowther. Oh, yeah, I saw him and he helped me to get out. Yeah, yeah. that's In fact, that's one of, uh, to me in my heart, that's one of the 
the worst parts of this whole story because there were several things that happened after she mentioned the fact that Wells saved her and she got involved with uh, her his family. Yeah, and wanted the to mo- meet her and they wanted her to speak at a memorial. But that I mean that's that's down. Yeah, to- she even showed up at a memorial oh, for Wells. Good God, Wells Ramey Crowther, an actual nine eleven victim. Yeah, well, Wells Ramey Crowther is somebody who's very dear to. Amanda and and me both is a genuine true hero of the day, but we're not talking about him today. We could do an entire podcast about him. Oh yeah, there's a lot. Of, yeah, there's a lot of good things to say, but we tend to do things that are a little bit dark because uh, I mean people need to talk about this kind of crazy like crazy shit. Uh, you, you cussed. That's cu- all right. I did a cuss. We'll leave it. We'll leave it. This is dark content, both in language and in material. But, uh, yeah, we do need to talk about these things because they so often uh, in in the um, swirl of media, these kind of things kind of get lost in the story. So there's some bad information here that's interesting topic for discussion. So back to Tanya Head. Tanya Head. So after she became the leader of the Survivors Group, so I think it's called the Survivors Network, mm-hmm. she continuously... Yeah, told people stories about it and how she was struggling with her stress about it and bad memories and having terrors in the night uh none of which were true of course right right none of none of which was true at all and she became the leader like i said again and again already um she that's important, you know, but you can say it again and again because it's important. This is one of the... that's what she did again and again. To me, this is like one of those blue chip facts. This liar was able to weasel her way in and work her way through and network to the point that she was at the top. I know. It's like me claiming I was at Auschwitz. You weren't? No, I wasn't. Oh, good. Oh, that's really offensive. All right. Anyway, no, I'm just trying to make an analogy because this is so ridiculous what she did. No, she did something absolutely crazy and achieved something that it's unbelievable she ended up being so the little bit of good she did was she made it so that survivors could go to ground zero that's right that's one the one little thing that well i wouldn't say little it's a big big, thing that's a big thing but she did it under the pretense that she actually was living there in New York and working in the towers. Not true. She started getting cocky after she did a tour of Ground Zero with Rudy Giuliani. With the mayor. Mm-hmm. With the man. And um, then people... And they had her speak on, on uh, at the inaugural... Yes. At the inaugural... Um, Which is a disgrace. Yeah, they had her speak at that. And so she was on TV, and, and her speech, of course, was recorded for posterity. And, and let me just say, if I looked like her, I wouldn't want to be on TV. Oh, man. Come on, Amanda. All right. Yeah, I know. Too easy. Low low shot. Too easy. Yeah. Um, but the, the fact is, is that this liar was able to weasel her way into that place, able to speak at the inaugural unveiling of, of what Ground Zero was to become... Uh, you know, and she was on TV, yeah. and and she was important. And after that, after that moment, everything switched for Tanya. Had she became cocky, she was like, "Oh, did everybody yes. hear me speak on TV? It was wonderful. I was so wonderful." She on their message boards for the Survivor Network, she was very cocky. She was like, "Oh, I couldn't believe it. It was all about her. Nine Eleven just disappeared for her." She yeah. was just talking about what happened to her. And, I was so amazing. Yeah, I was so great. I was so nervous. I didn't know what to do, but it feels like I'm feeling better. It felt like a big step for me. What the hell? Yeah, she overstepped all of the stories. She overstepped all of the actual grief, and this became about Tanya Head. So since we don't want to, like, just linger on talking about this dumbass bitch. Hmm. Anyway. Hey, your feelings are genuine. I I really don't like her. Yeah. I have no like for her. Uh, She ended up getting caught by the New York Times, I believe, that wanted to do a story about her. Mm -hmm. And none of the facts were adding up. She wouldn't talk to the New York Times. That's right. 
Yes, not at all. Uh, not at all. Uh, she said they were out to get her. Her story started to fall apart a little bit, mm-hmm. and even her own group of people started to catch her in little. Uh, that's not. That's not like, the that detail you already. Yeah, that's that not doesn't quite. Seem you quite didn't right. say that last time. Then and then uh, one of the biggest nails in, I hate, to, one of the biggest nails in her coffin was when she went to the Remy, memorial, and the parents asked her to speak, and she had someone else speak for her because it was too stressful for her. That was really weird. Also, more weird is that she would even show up for that because that's so disrespectful. That man, Wells Crowther, was a very, very upstanding person. An amazing hero. Yes, and a hero. Uh, acting way outside of the scope of normal humanity. He he did... Again, that's a... This she is, even went so far as to meet his parents at, at their, their house. Home, at their home. And say... Well, I'm going to give you this piece of something that happened when I was on at 9/11 and he helped me cuz he that was probably the last thing he ever touched. What? Yeah. I mean, come on, yes. bitch. Your feelings are genuine. Yeah, so she I mean, the whole story was is that she was in the in the sky lobby. Yeah. And the plane crashed and some people did actually survive the sky lobby uh-huh. that day. And Remy was one of the people that helped people out of... Well, his name's Wells. Middle name, Remy. I keep calling him Remy. Yeah. Uh, Wells. Wells was, was a hero that day helping people out of... And did not survive. The sky, and did not survive. But uh, she said, I was on fire and suddenly this man appears and he helped me put out my arm and he helped me out of into the stairwell and then he went back. I never saw him again. Which is a genuine story from other people about when they saw Wells and he would just appear and he was like a genuine again this could be a whole nother podcast yeah but but the fact that she incorporated Wells Remy Crowther into her story after just reading so much about it like I've read everything I could possibly find about 9-11 but that doesn't mean I was there right I mean come on come on yeah anyway so the end of this tale is it turns out when she claimed she was in the hospital after 9-11 she was in spain doing her privileged (laughs) her privileged Privileged. yeah her (laughs) (laughs) oh baby no her privileged life she Mm. was just doing stuff probably that she always did like eating a lot (laughs) I, i I'm guessing, like, just eating probably like, stuff. Eating was probably happening. And then, to top all of it off, after all the lies, some random anonymous, of course, person said, Oh, Tanya Head is dead. She died. I think they said whoever it was, which is probably Tanya Head, said she committed suicide. <laughs> That's right. That's the end. That was the end of the story. End of the tale. The end of the the, the uh, end of the tale of Tanya Head. She's alive, I'm sure, and she's probably like making up a story about her being in Vietnam fighting Charlies. Anyway, thank you for listening, and uh, fuck Tanya Head. There we go. I think we've reached our cuss limit for for one episode, so yeah, that's a good time to say goodbye and thank you for listening. And if you want to comment about Tanya Head below, go right ahead and do so, and. This is Dana and Mandy signing off. Talk to you later. Bye. (laughs) Oh, my God.